Good morning. This week we have a really interesting project that was sent in by viewer Wade. He's got a housing that holds an electric motor and he's going to mount it to a surfboard, I think. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's a pretty interesting project for a lot of reasons. You know, normally, as you know, I would tell you that cut molds are superior to every kind of mold and you should never do two-part molds that you stick together and that whole nonsense. Well, this week we're going to do a two-part mold. Let's take a look at Wade's project. Here's our housing, very beautiful. As you can see, it has two parts. You can just see the little parting line down the middle. So there's a left side and a right side. Let's for just for right now, just look only at the left side. This has to be done in a two piece mold because you have to catch all the details here on the front side and you have to catch all the details in the back side. So uh, there's no getting around it. We're gonna have to have a two part mold. This is where you want a flat parting line all the way around the part and you want it mounted to a flat surface. So let's go ahead and just mount it onto a surface. Now you could use anything. You could use Plex, you could use MDF, you could use plywood. Uh, you want it to be smooth, and if you do use wood, you want to seal it well with some kind of wood sealer or wax. Um, also, you're gonna need to key the two halves of the molds together because you're not gonna have a nice jagged cut surface in this case. So I'm just gonna use these little half round spheres now the first thing we have to deal with is a slight problem. See down in here, you got voids. You can actually look down in there and see what I'm talking about. Yep, you can look down. See how you can see down in there where the motor housing is? That's no good. And this is a through and this here is this one's a through hole here. So that's no good. So what we want to do is we want to plug all those surfaces and I'm just going to use sheet wax to do that. So I'm going to stick some sheet wax in, in there. So you can just buy this sheet wax exactly for this purpose. It's pretty thin, like 16th of an inch or 8th inch thick, thick, thick wax. And you plug up all these holes because you don't want, you only want to cast this side of the, of the model in this side of the mold. You don't want to cast the inner pieces there on the other side. Uh, you can also see, let me see if I can move you in closer. You can also see that I plugged up all these little holes in here. Now you could cast those in, but another real issue with this part is precision. Here's the problem with castings. When you, we're gonna take this model and we're gonna put rubber around it. And when that rubber cures, it's gonna shrink a little tiny bit. And then when we pour the resin into the mold, that's gonna shrink a little tiny bit. So if you cast in all the parts that have to mate together, like the inner walls of the housing of the motor, uh, the screw holes, any parts with threads, um, you know, you're going to have a problem because they're not going to be precisely to the same dimensional tolerances as the original model was. They're going to be slightly smaller. No matter what you do, there's always a factor of shrinkage. If you check the material data sheet on your rubber and your resin, you will find that they will tell you what the coefficient of shrink is, how much you can expect it to get smaller. And if you measure the dimensions of your model and you plug in those numbers, you see it could be anything from several thousandths to several, a little fraction of an inch off. And that's just enough in a machined part to make things not fit together. So generally speaking, you don't cast the mating surfaces or the machine surfaces into a casting. You plug those in, you fill them in, and you machine out those parts in a secondary process. Um, let's look, look at the next step here. Keep moving forward on our project. So now what we need to add is we need to add a sprue funnel. Let's do it. And there it is. There's my beautiful sprue funnel. Now, that looks different than any other sprue funnel you've seen. And here's the logic for this. This is a large part. And uh, we are gonna wanna flow the resin in, down in there as quickly as possible. And there's really no place to get it in, you know, with a round sprue. You'd have to have a pretty substantial, pretty large diameter round sprue to flow enough material into this part to get it to fill before the resin started to gel. So what I've done is I've built a sprue that is long and skinny, just like the top of the part. And when you pour the resin down into here, uh, it is just gonna flow like crazy and it'll just flow right down into the part and fill up the part beautifully. Think about the shape of your sprue. You always have to match the volume of your sprue to the volume of the part that you're trying to fill. 
If you try to fill a big part with a little tiny sprue, it's just not going to work. The resin's going to gel before you get anywhere near to finish. And then you say, well, I'll just do a bunch of pours. But the problem is the resin's going to clog the little sprue. That's the first place it's going to clog up. So you're done. You have to pour it in a continuous pour. You have to have enough time to fill them all, the part. And so I designed this sprue, A, to fit the part. So it's, after this part obviously is done, this, this whole thing will be a unit. And right across this line here, right across down here, we're going to trim that. At the same time, we machine out all these holes and cut the threads in there, because this is a threaded part inside of that area. We'll also trim this off. So that's the sprue. So now we also have to add the vents. And there's only going to be two. And they're right there. And they can be really small. Now you might say, how come you can have such a great big sprue and such tiny vents? And the answer is, uh, air is incredibly low viscous and it flows fast. And these little tiny half round, notice that, they're the, that the vents are smaller than the part. And so you'll be able to just trim these off easy and neat and it'll work out just perfect. Sometimes you have to do innovative and creative <laughs> uh, venting. Uh, sometimes vents just aren't tubes that run away from the model. A lot of times they're just uh, little tiny supports that allow the air to escape out of a part. Now notice what that is. That is a tiny little piece of wax that I have built up because I am concerned that this area of the mold right in here, right in here, you're going to catch a bubble in there because the resin is going to rise up from the bottom and it's going to catch a bubble as it rises right into this edge. So I put this little little bit, just a very thin little wall of wax there, and that way the air, as, it, as the resin rises up, the air can just flow out and into the main body. And sometimes you just have to, and it's really a tiny little thing. Now that means that every time you take a casting of the mold, you're going to have to clean that little web off of there. But cleaning that web off of there is a heck of a lot easier than filling a bubble, you know, patching a bubble, building it up, then sanding it and smoothing it down. Forget about it. It's easier to have a little too much material on a casting to sand off than it is to have to fill a hole with a different kind of material, build it up, and sand it off. It's so much less work. Anytime you can avoid the work of fixing bubbles, I highly recommend you do it. The front side of the left part is ready to go. So let's build a mold case around it. There you go. Just built that out of wood. And there again, that wood would be well and truly waxed. All right. So now we're ready and we can just go ahead and pour the rubber. Okay, beautiful. Got it done. So 24 hours have passed and we can let that rubber harden and we'll turn it around and we'll take the mold apart. And uh, we have to be careful not to get the rubber off the first part and off the sprues and such, but we do need to get the backing off and that's a little tricky. Well, with some care, you can uh, carefully remove the backing. That part should only, I should have mentioned this, that part should only have been stuck very lightly to the backing because you need to pull it off. Here you see the back side of the vents and you see the back side of the sprue and you want those to stay in place. And now notice how the little half spheres have transferred their impression into the first mold so that when you pour the second mold, it's going to cast that and that's going to be the thing that's going to key the whole thing together and lock the whole thing together. You can see how the dam we built built this wall of rubber because we want this part of the mold, this, this motor, uh, to be in the second mold, the back side of the mold think that we are pretty much ready to add the second case. All right, so we got the mold case ready. Once again, we level it up. And just as we did the last time, let's go ahead and fill this mold up with rubber. There you go. Good. So now we have both sides of the molds filled with rubber. Now, obviously, you're going to have to make two of them. It's not good enough to make one you're going to have to make two of them because there's a left and a right. So you, this is what your final project's going to look like. You can see the part laying down there inside the mold with the pour funnel in place. So the question is, now that you've got them made, how are you going to hold them closed? And this is how it is commonly done. You see this all over, all over the place. People just use rubber bands to hold the mold closed. There are problems with this method. And the main problems is that all of the pulling force in the rubber bands or just about all of the closing force, the pulling force, it's here in, this, in these corners, in these edges. So all of the pull force is along these side bands. And the result is you get almost no 
pulling force here in the middle. There's just nothing pushing against the broad side, the flat side of the mold, because all of the, again, the, these rubber bands are under tension. If anything, the rubber bands in tension along this direction are pulling and causing the, the mold to bow open. So not only are these rubber bands not holding the mold closed on this side, they're actually, if anything, opening it up. So it's a very poor solution. And what happens very often when you fill the mold with resin, the resin can easily overcome the holding force of these rubber bands on this size. And then the mold opens up and then you get really ugly and really visible leakage, which causes a lot of parting line cleanup. So this is just very far from an ideal way to do this mold. Before I show you what I think is a better way to make the mold, I wanted to ask you, did this video format work for you? I'm experimenting a lot with my channel these days and I'm trying to find the best way to do viewer projects and also respond to your input and comments and questions. If you got something out of this video, hit that like button. And if you didn't, let me know. <laughs> Comment below, tell me what you didn't like about it. All right, enough of that. Let's get on with it and look at the solution for how to close this mold case. A much better way to hold rubber block molds together is using a strategy like this. And what I've done is you could, you could build these yellow parts out of just about anything, styrofoam, uh, plywood, even thick cardboard, uh, any number of materials work really well. But the huge advantage here is because it's an oval shape, the pull force is even from side to side. This rubber band at this point is pulling in this direction. The tension runs along the side and it puts very even pressure across here and it just does a great job of holding molds closed. If you really care about the quality of the castings, take the time, build yourself an elaborate and very effective mold case like this. Thanks to viewer Wade for sending in his project. It was a lot of fun to do. I really enjoyed it. And uh, projects are coming in every day now, and I'm real excited to be working on some of these. They're gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. And thanks for watching. It means a lot to me that you guys watch my videos, and I'll see you next week.